Hey everyone, Jolt here. So when you're reading a PDF document in Obsidian, what do you do when there's an image that you want to capture for your notes? Well, what I do is I start the screen capture tool, I select the image and then I press paste and I have my image here. This solution is only sort of good. The main problem with this solution is that this image has now lost its connection to its original source. Of course, I can use a naming convention. I can give this image a name and with that I can reference back to the source, but it is not really such a good solution. So I've extended the Excolid Raw image cropping feature to support PDF documents. This is how it works. So, for example, now I'm on Canvas, but I'm going to show you the same with an Obsidian Markdown node and with Excolid Draw as well. So here I'm now in a Canvas node and I'm reading this PDF document. I'm on this active page and I want to capture this image. So all I need to do is press Ctrl or Command P and type in Crop. And with this, the image cropper opens and I can just simply drag from the top and drag from the bottom. I can also drag from the side to make this image exactly the size I want. And with that, I have the cropped image here. Now, if you're interested, the cropper has additional features. So I recommend you watch my other video on cropping. For example, I can mask out parts of the image but we'll talk about that in the other video. What I want to show you now is the big difference here is when I double click on this image, then this menu opens. And here I can choose to either open the cropper so I can change the cropping of this image or I can open the original location of the file. So when I click here, then my PDF opens on the page from which I cropped the image. Now let me show you how this feature works in a markdown node. So let's create a new markdown node and I'm just going to add how to read a paragraph here. So what doesn't work is if I read a document here, I don't know which page you're on. So that unfortunately doesn't work. What does work is when you're on a page, you can add hashtag page equals, for example, nine. And with this, the PDF document opens on page nine. So you can see the page number right there. That's the page number. Now, if I stand with the cursor on this line, so this line is the active line, I can again open the command palette and choose crop and mask image. And it will take this page and open it in the cropper. Now in the cropper, I can again just simply do my cropping like this. And when I'm done, then getting back to my document, you can see that it's now the image. And the image even has a link reference at the bottom. But of course, if I double click on the image, then I can still open the original file as well, just as in case of Canvas. Now to show you maybe a better way of achieving this. The way I would do this is I would read a PDF document in the PDF reader like here. And when I get to a page where I have an image that I want to capture, I would simply select a part of the text from this page. So I'm now in the PDF reader. I select a part of the page and I copy a link to the section like this. And then I head back to my markdown document and I simply add this link to the section. And after adding the link to the section, I can open the cropper and it will open that section. And again, I can simply do my cropping. So you will see that I can crop the image like this and like this. Now, what you will also notice is this is hard to read or sometimes hard to read. So some of the PDF documents have a transparent background. And there are two things that it's good to know that you should know about this. First of all, if you find this hard to read, you can always click here and change the background 
maybe to white and then the text will be visible very nicely. The other thing I want to show you is here, if I open the properties panel, you will see that I have a special property here, CSS classes, Excolidraw, cropped PDF page. So if I remove this, then what you will see is when this image refreshes, so I will need to change this and change it back, then this image will not have a background color. So you might or might not want this. What I want to highlight is here, you can create or define your own CSS classes. So if instead of white, you want a yellow background or whatever other color for the page color of the PDF, you can change the CSS classes here. The only thing is you need to refresh the link so the CSS class is applied when the image is embedded. And then finally, let me show you how this works in Excolidraw. It works pretty similar to the previous ones. So I'm going to add how to read a paragraph as an embeddable. So now I have the how to read a paragraph document embedded into Excolidraw. I can, oops, I can click on this and I can scroll to the part that I want to crop. So I'm here. Now if I press crop image, then this page opens and everything works similar. So I can just simply crop this page like this. And when I'm done with cropping, then I can turn back to Excolidraw. My image is going to get updated and here you go. So I can now close this and I can navigate with this image. There are two more small things that I want to show you regarding cropping. And then there's one more thing I want to show you as a new feature in this version of Excolidraw Obsidian. So first about cropping, there are two new settings that you can use. Setting number one is under basic. Here, there's a crop file folder. So the way Excolidraw crops an image is it creates an image cropper. So the image remains, your PDF file remains your PDF file. So the cropping will always read the PDF and create the crop out of that or the cropped image out of that. But you might want to save the Excolidraw cropping file to a specified folder. So if you set the folder here, then the cropping file will go to that folder. If not, then the cropping file will follow your files and links settings. So it, in my case, it's going to go in a subfolder under the current folder called attachments. So that's your option that you can define a dedicated folder for your crop files. The other setting I added is under saving and file name. And here you can add a prefix for the crop file. I now have cropped, but maybe you just want to add C or whatever. If this is empty, then cropped will be added or used. So you can add an underscore if you want to leave this sort of empty. That's another setting. And then finally, the new feature I wanted to show you is just a small new feature. So I'm going to insert an image and I'm going to choose my lovely monkey here. So the new feature is now you can round the corner of images. So here in the properties, I can click a rounded corner and then the image will have a rounded corner. So if you like rounded images now, with an image, you can each easily uh, achieve that. So that's all I wanted to show you today. I think this cropping feature is really powerful. You can crop and mask images. You can crop and mask PDF pages. PDF pages retain their links to the original source. And overall, since I've implemented this feature, 
I'm amazed at you know, how many cases I've used it. This is such a cool feature. I recommend you try it out and you play with it. Enjoy. Thank you.